there is a beautiful connection between elementary number theory on one hand and group theory on the other hand. Now we don't get to talk about group theory at pre-college level, at least not that much. Of course, we do talk about it in our mathematical Olympiad programs, but that too in the like in the higher stages. In the initial stages, kids, children do not have this wonderful connection in front of their eyes. So they sometime might think that why are we learning all this disconnected stuff? I'll give you one example. Uh, suppose you are uh, worried about GCD, uh, with this common divisor. We learn a lot about it in number theory. And then we face a concept of co-prime numbers. That is, two numbers are co-prime to each other if their GCD is one. So, for example, 4 and 9 are co-prime to each other. Notice that 4 itself is not a prime number. 9 itself is not a prime number. But they are co-prime because their GCD is 1. Right? Now, it's a very interesting exercise to calculate the number of numbers that are co-prime to a certain number and smaller than it. I'll give you an example. Let's say the number 8. If you want to calculate the numbers, which is smaller than 8 and co-prime to 8, there is 1, 3, 5, 7. There are precisely 4 numbers, 1, 3, 5 and 7. 4 numbers that are smaller than 8 and co-prime to 8. Now there is a very famous function called Euler's torsion function or Euler's phi function. It was invented by one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, Leonard Euler or Euler, however you pronounce it. He invented this function called phi function. And phi of a number is precisely the number of numbers less than it and co-prime to it. So for example, phi of 8 is 4 because there are 4 numbers 1, 3, 5 and 7 which are less than 8 and co-prime to 8. Now, you might be wondering that why in the world we should be worried about the numbers which are co-prime to a certain number and less than that number. Now, when you are in elementary number theory, the reason is not that apparent. It's not immediate. But if you have a little bit of idea of group theory, you will immediately recognize that this set, set of 1, 3, 5 and 7, forms one of the fundamental examples of a finite group. So, those of you who have not seen this before, a group is a very very beautiful algebraic object it's a very simple object it is a set a set of things of course one three five seven is a set of things and then there is a operation a binary operation that is you can let's call it star you can star two elements of that set to get another element of the same set i i like to think about groups as a universe in itself that is, you can combine stuff within the group and make whatever is made is also in the same group. So that's the beauty of groups. This particular set, 1, 3, 5, 7, which we learn in elementary number theory, happens to be, happens to be the group of four elements or four objects. The operation here is multiplication modulo 8. It's an example of a finite group and Finite groups are extremely useful in a variety of for a variety of reasons, including cryptography, and that's why uh, this function is so important, the Euler's torsion function. That's why it has a name of its own. These connections are very important. One other important connection is the uh, number of numbers less than. 8, all numbers less than 8, all non-negative numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, these are the numbers less than 8, that also forms a group, that's called the cyclic group of order 8, because there are 8 elements, so order 8, so this cyclic group of order 8, now if you're thinking with your lens of group theory, you will now want to think about the generators of this group the numbers which can be repeatedly 
composed with itself to create all the elements of the group. Turns out the group of 1357, those are the precise generators of this particular cyclic group. Now, until and unless you know this big picture connection at the base level when you are learning number theory, you won't be able to see the interconnectedness of the various ideas that are scattered around in seemingly unrelated manner. It's very important that you see the connections because otherwise what's the beauty in mathematics and then you can really extrapolate it and learn a lot of other things that are viewed from the lens of group theory. I'm not saying that you have to learn a lot of group theory but I would certainly say that you are definitely encouraged to learn at least some of it. Uh, we plan to make a separate sub-course on group theory and number theory for mathematical olympiads pretty soon. Uh, we are using it all the time in our math olympiad programs, but we don't have a separate course for that. It could be very interesting. Tell me in the comment section if you would like to see such a course coming up, a little module on the connections of group theory and olympiad number theory. Uh, thank you for joining in today and I'll see you in the next one. Keep on doing great mathematics. Take care. Bye.